Jane Lowry and I'm the Programme Manager for um, Time to Change work here in Wales. Um, my focus today is going to talk about workplace and some of the work that we've been doing in tackling stigma across workplaces in Wales. <coughs> okay, so what is Time to Change? For those of you not familiar um, with our work, um, our main mission is to improve public attitudes um, and engender behaviour change uh, amongst individuals living and, uh, and working in Wales. We also want to reduce the stigma and the discrimination uh, that we know is so rife in society, um, and that includes in the workplace. We know from our own research that um, stigma is at its most stubborn um, within the workplace, so we're trying to grapple with that, understand um, how that is, um, is constructed, and, and how um, essentially we can challenge it and work with employers in order to um, start shifting that culture uh, for the benefit of everybody. Um, we aim to empower um, people with lived experience, both within the workplace and outside, and providing them with a platform and a voice um, to help us challenge that stigma and discrimination. We know that this model, um, we call it a social contact model of, um, very simply, um, having somebody with lived experience sharing their experience with a group of people, and that can be in a formal setting or informal community setting. We know that that's a really powerful way of connecting uh, an individual, a real person, with real experiences, and that goes a long way in helping to reduce um, and tackle stigma. We also work with employers to support them in changes to policy and practice. Um, that's not the only way, of course, that employers can um, help shift organisational culture. Um, it's a much more difficult task to do that and change the attitudes and, and, and how people are feeling in work if they are facing a mental health problem. But policy and practice can help in order to provide that infrastructure for that change to happen. So, what is our approach? How do we do this? Um, we work to tackle stigma across three interconnected strands across society, so uh, within the workplace, um, with our champions and out in the community. Um, we have over 160 active Time to Change Wales champion from all walks of life who represent the campaign um, and go out and share their experiences, their very um, uh, intimate um, experiences. Um, so these individuals are really, really brave and are our ambassadors for the campaign. Without our champions and without that lived experience component, there simply wouldn't be a Time to Change Wales campaign. Um, and we're also very active um, in, in reaching those people digitally, so trying to reach the whole of Wales through social marketing campaigns. Some of you may be aware of, of some recent ones. Our most recent one is Talking is a Lifeline, which was aimed at um, men uh, and getting men to, to talk. Um, and yeah, our whole social marketing work is, uh, is, is, um, is, is really strong and um, hopefully it, it reaches young people, older people, and everybody who, who engages and con consumes information in that way, um, we aim to reach them. So, before I go on, wh what do we mean by stigma and how do, how do we define it? Um, well, for us, stigma is something that is <coughs> very easy to quantify. Um, stigma is messy, um, it's hard to challenge, um, and it's at best unpleasant for those individuals experiencing it. And at worst, it can be disabling for those individuals who are trying to get on with their lives as well as facing a mental health issue and facing um, unfair treatment, uh, judgment, um, and negative attitudes and behaviours um, from either colleagues, friends, and family. It's a social construct, um, in essence, and it manifests itself in a number of different ways, but it's always negative. Stigma, of course, is always. Um, always negative and we know from the work that we do with our champions who, are, who very openly talk about their experiences of stigma um, that it's still very very strong in society and whilst good work has been done not just by Time to Change Wales but by other um, initiatives um, there's still a huge amount of work to be done I think we would all agree that um, we've experienced or witnessed um, stigma whether it's first hand or, or second hand in some shape or form so, what is our rationale for establishing such campaign? If we look at some of the figures around it, so mental health is one of the leading causes of sickness absence in the UK. 
Uh, it costs 70 billion to the UK economy in um, plus the sort of basket cost of loss of output, social benefits, and healthcare bills. Um, one in three of the UK workforce have been formally diagnosed with a mental health condition at some point in their lifetime. Um, that was research from the Mental Health Research Network back in 2009, so quite out of date now, but there is a lack of data on, on mental health um, stigma in general uh, in the UK. Um, workplace wellbeing it is a driver of economic development and sustained prosperity. We keep people well in work for longer, um, I don't need to outline what the benefits um, of that is, both for um, how people are feeling in work, but also for those concerned with bottom lines and, and productivity. Um, there's a huge amount to be said about the investment um, in your staff and in their well-being. Okay, so the time to change employer pledge. Um, this is the, one of the main components of our work with employers. Um, and it's a public declaration that an organisation makes to commit to tackling stigma and changing organisational culture. What sits behind that is an action plan, which I'll go through very briefly in terms of what the principles are. Um, so it's not just a photo opportunity to say, oh look what we're doing, we've got a lovely plaque to put up on the wall. There's actually work that actually goes into it, um, <coughs> whereby an organisation has to outline what are they going to do, what are the practical actions and steps that they're going to take, um, putting uh, timelines around that, how soon they're going to do it, who's going to lead on it, um, and the action plan is, is what um, warrants a, a pledge to be given to an organisation. And we review those, we send them back if we don't think they're good enough, and we say, okay, yeah, we're ready to, to, to give you the pledge. It's not an accreditation, um, it's not an award, it's a, um, it's a commitment. Um, so, different entry points, um, employers commit at different entry points, they're not saying, oh, we're great at what we do, um, it's about wanting to improve. And there's always room for improvement at whichever stage an organisation comes to us. So what's the picture looking like in Wales? We have over 160 employers in Wales that have signed the pledge, uh, and that's since 2015 when we initially um, launched the programme. This represents, and I've counted all of them, uh, over 270 employees in Wales. So that's quite significant. Um, and the diversity of the organisations we work with um, is really, really broad. So from large um, health boards employing thousands and thousands of people to small, uh, micro businesses employing maybe four or five individuals. And obviously, the approach then is different in terms of what feasibly they can do. Um, but the goal and the, the mission is the same, uh, and it's to improve the working culture and to, and to create um, an infrastructure in place that supports individuals should they, um, should they have a mental health condition. Demand is at an all-time high for Time to Change Wales, um, and as a small team, we are actually struggling to cope with the demand of organisations who want to sign the pledge and who want to commit to this, which is a really good position to be in. Two years ago, that wasn't the case. Um, we were receiving a lot of interest, but nothing compared to where we are um, today. So I think that's testament to organisations really waking up and thinking, okay, this could be the first step. And we're not saying that by doing the pledge, you're tackling all of your issues in terms of workplace wellbeing and around um, some of the pressures that people being off with mental health um, issues can, can cause. And we acknowledge that that is an issue for, for any employer, um, but how we can work together and support. Um, it's very much um, a starting step um, that people take because you can have the best processes and policies in place around dealing with mental health and supporting your staff, but if the workplace culture um, is stigmatising, then um, you know, that's what you need to tackle initially. So, in terms of some of the key considerations that we give to, um, to employers, we want employers to make support available and accessible, um, developing meaningful and person-centered uh, sorry, policies. So working with individuals who are may, may be happy to share their experiences <coughs> maybe having been off sick and returning to work and looking at, okay, did the policy cover every single stage of that process? Are there any gaps and are there things that, um, that can be improved? I think we encourage people to have a positive dialogue around mental health, but it's not seen as a taboo. And we encourage organisations to, um, to do awareness raising events, to create that space, and that can be a physical space or a virtual space, for those conversations to take place. Um, because that can be a real lifeline for, um, for, for colleagues who maybe are struggling and who 
don't know actually where to go. Um, we know that it needs to be a flexible approach, that one policy or one idea isn't going to work for everybody. Um, and it's trial and error. So a lot of the activities and, and the employee leads that we work with have tried various different things. Some have been more successful than others, but it's about persevering and continuing. Um, that's really, really important. Um, and evaluating and tracking the progress. So if you're committing to a, a pledge, how do you know that it works? How do you know that it's making a difference? And we support employers in, in doing that, in measuring things like sickness absences, have they, have they um, gone down? Um, have disclosures gone up? Uh, and those sorts of things, to see that the organisations can actually track their progress. So in terms of the action plan itself, what does that look like? I'm not going to go into detail, um, some of you may be very familiar with it, but these are the seven principles that we developed a long time ago with employers, um, and these are things that we think are the absolute bare minimum that they should be including in an action plan. So demonstrating senior level back buy-in, and including that, and maintaining that, um, which can be a real challenge. Demonstrating accountability, um, so who's going to be responsible for delivering this work, and recruiting um, employee champions, and that's training that Time to Change Wales does specifically for employers who have signed the pledge. Raising awareness, we provide content materials, campaign materials for the workplace to be able to deliver your own ready-made campaigns in the workplace. Um, encouraging organisations to update and implement policies to address mental health problems in the workplace. Um, Asking staff to share personal experiences, if that's appropriate, because we know that's a really powerful way of <coughs> washing um, stigma within an organisation. If somebody, particularly from a senior level, discloses maybe a mental health issue or some struggles, that can be a really powerful way of sharing <coughs> that culture. We also really push for equipping line managers to have conversation and also training around mental health. Often they're the first port of call um, if somebody's having a crisis at work and the experience can be very different um, for, for a number of individuals. So if we can equip uh, middle management and, and line managers to be able to deal with that in a compassionate way that can get people the support <coughs> quicker, um, then that's a really positive thing. And then providing information about mental health and signposting to services, that's really key as well. It's a really small thing, but if that information is hidden or not made visible, that can be very difficult for somebody um, facing a crisis at work. So those, I mean, there's more to it, and lots of organisations do much more than this, but these are the bare minimum um, activities that an organisation needs to commit to. I've mentioned employee champions, um, and this is a, a specific training programme, a half-day training programme that Time to Change comes into the workplace once you've signed the pledge um, to develop um, training for individuals who want to drive this agenda forward. It's not some for us a way of capacity building. We know Time to Change is not going to be around forever, so we want to build capacity within organisations so they can deliver the messages for us um, and be our kind of amplifiers and advocators. We have over 800 employee champions trained in Wales so far um, and all of them are um, really committed in, in driving this agenda forward and it's a free training for organisations as well. So what do they do? So they help and support um, the organisation's action plan through raising awareness um, of wellbeing activities, signposting and promoting healthy lifestyles. Um, I've mentioned around building capacity and driving the agenda forwards and ensuring that organisations are held to account in terms of taking ownership and responsibility um, for the commitment to their anti-stigma work. We are very clear what, what an employee champion isn't. Um, it's not about being a counsellor or providing clinical or any other type of, of support. It's about signposting um, and being that visible person that people can go to initially to, um, to find out. <coughs> one really quick, I wanted to just give you an example of a case study. This is um, one of our pledged employers, Companies House, um, who have pledged for quite some time. Um, this was a, a workshop that I delivered uh, last week where they shared um, their case study of, of the work that they've been doing. I'll just pick out some of the things that they've managed to achieve um, as a result of being involved in initiatives such as Time to Change Wales. Um, I can't claim credit for all of, all of these successes, but certainly we know that it's gone a really long way in changing the attitudes and culture. 52% um, reduction um, in sickness absence. Um, 155 um, days, redu sorry, reduced number of days um, lost to mental health, um, and that's in November 2017, so quite a recent figure. 
um, £90,000 um, in saving or estimated saving per year um, in those days that haven't been lost due to mental health. And obviously that starts much earlier in terms of prevention. So it's about looking at people's stress levels, maybe looking at some of the early symptoms and signs, um, having wellbeing initiatives that can really help people feel valued and understand actually my employer cares um, about my, my mental health. What's interesting is that um, initially the, uh, the number of absences due to mental health rocketed. And that's actually a really good thing because it means that people are feeling comfortable in disclosing that it is a mental health issue. And to me that's, that's what success really does look like. It's not about people saying, oh I've got back pain, whereas actually they're just facing crippling anxiety and can't possibly come to work. Um, so that's what we really like to see is that initially there's a spike in terms of mental health um, related sickness increasing, but the overall sickness absence decreasing because people are, um, are staying well in work. There's lots more to the case study and feel free to come talk to me afterwards if you want to know more, but they're a really good example of, of, of how they've taken this and really um, run with it and have really, really good results. In terms of child... In terms of challenges, I didn't want to just glaze over some of the challenges that doing the pledge um, can bring. Changing organisational culture is something long term. It takes years, in some cases, for, for that to happen. And it's the responsibility of everybody in that organisation, not just the senior managers or the people driving the pledge. Maintaining senior level buy-in, uh, our employers tell us that that is one of the biggest challenges. Um, and maintaining that throughout. Um, so we're looking at ways, how can we, how can we increase that? And how can we help um, our employers um, keep that high on the agenda of, of senior di directors? Measuring impact and success at organisational level, we're providing some of that support, but it is the onus of, of the organisations themselves to be um, looking at how do we do this? How do we measure where do we, where do we want to be in two, three years' time? And that's really, really important. So you can demonstrate that actually there's value in this work. Lack of training in line managers, and um, that's a huge one, and that's always something that employers come to us to say, um, you know, that's a really key issue for us. So it's looking at how can you um, do that in a way that's cost effective um, and that is a sustainable model. Time and resources, always an issue. Lots of people do this in addition to their day job. Um, so that commitment um, is, um, yeah, it's, it's something quite significant that people have to taken into consideration above and beyond their role. South stigma, that's also something that we always talk about within Time to Change. It's not just stigma experienced from other people, but actually stigma that you place on yourself, which can be debilitating and can, always, and can be a real barrier in terms of opening up and, and accessing the support. So we're looking at how, how do we try and tackle that through some of our messaging and some of our campaigns. But actually you have a responsibility if you're the one suffering a mental health condition, it's not just everybody else's responsibility to support you, but um, you have a responsibility as well. Some of our campaigns, um, you've probably all heard of Time to Talk Day, that's coming up in February, um, and these are really great hooks for employers to, to jump onto. They're ready-made campaigns, um, so that you don't need to spend a huge amount of time creating your own campaigns. All of the sort of collateral and, and, and creative work is provided by Time to Change Wales, and it's a really good way of starting that conversation. However, it is about continuing that. It's not just about doing a burst of activity on Time to Talk Day and then forgetting all about it. <coughs> we want to see that continued throughout the year. Just checking time. I've got about three minutes. No? Mm -hmm. No more left. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm going to draw this to a close then. If you have um, any questions, obviously I'll be on the panel. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening. Good luck.